Gotcha. Hey, welcome to Coffee with Joe for November 22nd, Sunday, 2009. Yeah, that's our first Sunday, Sunday Coffee with Joe. <laughs> uh, there, are th there are those who say you can't trust the government with anything. You certainly couldn't trust them with the printing press for the money supply. It's hard enough to keep any breaks on them now when they have to borrow all the money into existence. How could you ever trust the government to be in charge of printing their money debt free as we advocate we're looking for the replacement Pete of the uh, of that business cycle that the Austrians had the problem with and that we have the problem with uh, to have a, a government basis makes sense in the sense in this sense we do have the means to to correct uh, for the expansion and contraction of the money supply the business cycle expanding and, and contracting. Well, we want a stability. We want monetary stability. And that's why when uh, Milton Friedman wrote his book, A Program for Monetary Stability, he had, uh, he had that in mind. How do, we do, how do we go about doing that? And he proposed two methods, Pete. One method was, was uh, in, his, uh, in his treatise on the, the framework for uh, economic stability, in which he laid out that the government would create the money, Pete, by virtue of its budgeting process, using the monetary authority to make a determination of what it would be. You're, you're talking about um, determining how much new money is going to be created that year, figuring out what that number is, which is a controversial number. The uh, system could be made or broken based on how well that number is determined, right? Yeah, it could be inflated or deflated based on what that number is. Yeah, just like it is now. Um, but it would be much harder to hide, uh, Pete, because right now we hide inflation, okay? We've had a huge inflation inflation in the money supply over the last 10 years, and it's hidden in credit default swaps and derivatives. It's hitting in mortgage-backed security a assets. Uh, whereas if it was done out in the open and the monetary authorities were saying, we're going to create this much money to support this much growth in this part of the economy, um, and the money is out there, and that happens or it doesn't happen or inflation happens or deflation happens, we have a, we have a means to correct. Correct. Um, yeah. And, be yeah. Leaving. and since we're going to create it debt-free to the degree that we do that, you know, we don't have to raise taxes in order to do it. And so, you know, the need to pay for uh, whatever it is that we're doing is, re is reduced to the taxpayer, not the re need to re to pay for it is reduced, but the taxpayer's obligation to pay for it is replaced by the government's authority to create money. And I think that's, that, uh, that notion, when you, when you can you know, kind of grasp the whole notion for, for why it makes sense for the government to be able to create the money, takes care of a big part of the problem, Pete. It doesn't solve any of the problem that, that is created by the fact that money controls the government. If we ever have these reforms, Joe, that we've been talking about on this website, and the money, the government is allowed to create its own money and spend it into existence, certainly there will be stories of corrupt officials near the spigot. We still have human beings running the system, right? We'll probably still have politicians who are trying to manipulate voters um, by their spending powers. Um, that may be enhanced by public money creation, but then the voters will also learn if they let their politicians create too much money for a few years, as you say, that they have inflation going on in the economy. Exactly. And, exactly. And then voters can vote in representatives who run on a less inflationary, we're not going to print as much money platform. We don't solve the problem of either corruption or, or anything like that by solving the money system problem, Pete. Okay. But we're enabled to see what's happening. I would say that, you know, the potential for the government actors manipulating the uh, uh, the money system is, is seriously reduced by virtue of having an open public monetary system as opposed to it all happens behind the uh, curtain. Try to explain money creation to just about anybody. I mean, even people who remember it from economics classes say they never really had much of a handle on it. Well, one of the great benefits of this public money system that you're talking about, Joe, is anybody can understand it. 
Definitely, that's definitely the truth. The, the, you know, the, the, the government creates the money. It creates fancy pieces of paper that can't be counterfeited too easily. That we all exchange every day, pieces of paper just like that, based yeah. on basically their non-counterfeitability, right? Which doesn't have anything to do whether whether it came into existence as a debt or not. Anybody can understand it. Anybody can understand how there would be too much and its relationship then to inflation or how there might be too little and it's a relationship to deflation. Um, people could people could be more involved in making democratic choices that affect their monetary system because the average Joe could understand that system. Absolutely. That's why there were so many average Joes in the, involved with the Greenback Party, Pete. When you take a look at what was go, who the populists were with the Greenback Parties in the late 1800s, Pete, okay? There were a lot of farm Democrat labor people. There were people that actually understood how, how money worked. Okay, it was, uh, we were much better educated with regard to money back then than we, than we are now. Once we, we established the Federal Reserve System, uh, it all went behind the curtain. And, uh, and, the, and the, the people's knowledge of it was uh, to, watch, to watch the, the impacts and the effects when things went wrong and to when things started to go right everybody knows well you know what it's going up but it's gonna go down and when it goes down they say it's gonna go up that's about all they know you know but I go back to my dad saying to me Joey when the when the when the when the, when the crash happened one day everybody was working and we were doing something and we were doing something productive and the next day we weren't what's what, what happened why, why, why were they in that mode of not understanding what happened? There was a contraction in the money supply, Pete, that the banks, there was a run on the banks because we had fractional reserve banking. Why, why didn't they understand that? Because it was all from behind the curtain. That's why. Because we did not have government issue and government control and educate, you know, people being educated about money in the way that and the way that we will have in the future, I believe, Pete. I think, I, like I said, I think we're, you know, we're coming to go over the hump to uh, having, uh, you know, people really understand the money system and to command an honest, stable money system so that we can keep what we create in the in the economy. That's really the objective of monetary stability is, is to, uh, you know, prevent the the theft by, uh, by uh, by paper, the paper theft. Of, of our wealth. So they call this the capitalist system, although every critic has his own cr uh, cr criticism of how this isn't really capitalism. But um, I'd say my criticism of how this isn't really capitalism is it sort of seems to suck the capital out of everything. The capital isn't in the roads and bridges. It's gone. The true capital that we, it are the things that we use to create the goods and services that we need is actually being sucked out of the system, it seems like to me. It's a little bit of an affront to call it capitalism because it seems to uh, liquidate all the capital it possibly can. Absolutely, Pete. Debt money has given capitalism a bad name. <laughs> you know? And not, that, not that there aren't things about capitalism that need to be ma uh, balanced, you know, and managed in order to have... <clears throat> but debt money... Is like is like the antithesis of capital. When the when the when the economists proposed the Chicago plan for monetary reform, it was done to save capitalism. They said if we continue with the debt money system of fractional reserve banking, it's going to destroy capitalism. We need to save capitalism by putting in a government issue money system. And, and Milton Friedman, Mr. Free Market, Mr. Free Enterprise, Mr. You know, said First, we need to have the foundation of a level playing field of, of money. And then we can have all the, free, all the free markets and all the free enterprise that we want. That does make sense. You know, there, there, there's a place for government. And the money system, because it's our money system, because it's our economy, because we're the United States of American citizens, is a place where it does make sense, Pete. We'll pick it up again next week. And uh, thanks for... Okay, thanks, Pete. See ya.